Today is Thursday, January 6, 2022. Good morning. I am Dr. Joyce Van Hook of Oakland, California, and I will be the moderator for this class. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and video buttons during class. Welcome to this Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, Great Britain, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen, of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted by the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8.5, that there are lords and gods many. But we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike lord and god, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah or impossible rendering of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, sub source substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose the cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, 
took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, entitled Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also, in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh, led the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our hearts and minds by the preaching of the gospel. The 10 primary me, objectives and aims are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan it speak the truth. We will open today's class with a prayer given by Dr. Pauline Forbes of Brooklyn, New York, a song by Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. The scripture reading will be Genesis chapters 1 and 2. That will be read by Dr. Deborah Van Hook of Oakland, California. 
Our readers for today are Dr. Dennis Pratt of Fairmont, West Virginia, and Dr. Marie Winters of Rochester, New York. May we have the prayer, please. Good morning, our brethren and sisters in Yeshua. Let us bow our heart and give an and glory to Yeshua for another day. Let us thank him for his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and for the, another resurrection. Oh, gracious Father, we come to you this morning. Ask you to guide and protect us. Let us hear your words and whatsoever coming out of, this, of your servant's mouth. Merciful Father, without your love, without your grace, we thank you. We thank you for every being of our body, every muscle that moves, we breathe in your name. We're walking in your name, oh merciful Father. We thank you for this blessed day, Yahshua. For these we ask in your most, most holy name, one man on earth, Yahshua the Messiah. Let us all say hallelujah. 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 Uh, this morning, um, this is Lenore uh, uh, Allen. I'm going to sing. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. The heavens ring with the holy name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in his name. The heavens ring with his holy name. Yes, we've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. We come to teach in the name of Yahshua. Come on, let's preach in the name of Yahshua. We've come to teach in his name. The soul is reached through his holy name. We've come to teach in the name of Yahshua. We want to hear the true name of Yahshua. Let's give a chair in the name of Yahshua. We've come to hear his true name. Bring all in fair to his holy name. We've come to hear in the name of Yahshua. We've come to see in the name of Yahshua. Spiritually in the name of Yahshua. We've come to see his true name, spiritually his holy name. We've come to see in the name of Yahshua. We've come to rise in the name of Yahshua. Filling the skies with the name of Yahshua. We've come to rise in his name, filling the skies with his holy name. We've come to rise in the name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. The heavens ring with the holy name of Yahshua. We've come to sing in his name. The heavens ring with his holy name. Yes, we've come to sing in the name of Yahshua. 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 Right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good morning. The scripture, please. Good morning. We will. I will be reading from the King James Version using the corrected names. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. 
and Elohim called the light day, and darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And Elohim said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Elohim called the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And Elohim called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And Elohim said, let the waters, uh, I have a block in the way uh, on my screen. Now I've lost you completely. Verse nine, and Elohim said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so. And Elohim called the land earth and the gather and the gathering together of the waters called the he seas. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed was in itself upon the earth and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let there be for signs, <clears throat> and excuse me, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And Elohim made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And Elohim saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And Elohim said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath light and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And Elohim created great whales and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And Elohim said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, the beast and the earth after his kind, and it was so. And Elohim made the beast of the earth after his, his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And Elohim saw that it was good. And Elohim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Elohim created man in his own image. In the image of Elohim created he him. Male and female created he them. And Elohim blessed them. And Elohim said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. 
And Elohim said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Chapter two, thus the heaven and earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which Elohim created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and, on the, and of the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh, Elohim, made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For Yahweh Elohim had not <clears throat> caused it to, to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And Yahweh Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And Yahweh Elohim Elohim planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made Yahweh Elohim, <clears throat> excuse me, and out of the ground made Yahweh Elohim to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the river went out of Eden to water the ground. And from thence it was parted and became, un, excuse me, and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. This is, excuse me, that it is which compasseth the whole ground, the whole land of Havila, where <clears throat> there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedellium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekel, that is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth is Euphrates. And Yahweh Elohim took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. And Yahweh Elohim commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but the tree of knowledge, good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And Yahweh Elohim said, it was not good that the man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. And out of the ground, Yahweh Elohim formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought us them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called them, no, excuse me, whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him.
And Yahweh Elohim caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. <clears throat> and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which Yahweh Elohim had taken for man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called the woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and call, excuse me, and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife and were not ashamed. I've read to you Genesis first and second chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank everyone for their participation. I will now turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad that everybody was able to assemble this morning. And um, I want to turn this over to Dr. Bonnie Snyder of Arkport, New York. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning. We came to sing in the name of Yahshua. Um, okay, I would like to, uh, I hope the people have worked on their little assignments, but I'd like to go back over the fifth and the sixth day, because I don't think that it was done as well as it could be. <laughs> um, and there's always more to bring out about it, for sure. Um, but before we start that, I wanna go back to the scripture reading and um, we wanna recognize where that first chapter of Genesis comes in. Um, you know, we've learned in this great teaching that there's an Exodus before a Genesis and really you have to start in the book of Exodus. So let's go to Exodus 24 and 24 and 15 would someone read that for me please exodus 24 and 15 mm -hmm. and moses went up into the mouth and a cloud covered the mouth uh -huh. and, and the glory of yahweh abode upon mount sinai and the cloud covered it six days colon okay so right there you have a colon keep reading and the seventh day he called unto moses out of the midst of the cloud so we need to ask, well, if there's a colon, there should be a listing or an explanation of the six days. And so we've been taught through this vision and revelation that it really in right there should be Genesis, the first chapter. Um, so that's the that's how Moses saw and heard it in the vision. Um, the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai and a cloud covered it six days. And then um, Yahweh Elohim showed him these things in a six day sequence. And that's what your first chapter of Genesis is. All right. Um, does everybody see that? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I just wanted you to see, you know, sometimes we take for granted that people have heard all these things and it's great stuff to recognize where that comes from. All right, so I'd like to go back to, uh, um, first of all, Lucy, did you work on your day? Lucy? Day five, okay. All right, so I wanna read through day five and six again. I got a couple things that I wanna talk about at least show you how it's threefold according to the pattern. And, um, and then we'll go on to the next day, which is uh, plate 12. Okay, so let's start at, pay, at plate one, but I want you to read, and we read this last week, but it, I, I'm gonna interrupt you after each paragraph so we can see exactly what it is that we're talking about. So the creation of the fifth and sixth day, it's the bottom of page 65 and start right there, plate number 10. Plate number and 10. And I'm yep. sorry, already I'm gonna be interrupting you because I want people to see what it is that um, we're looking at. Okay, go ahead. 
Plate number 10 illustrates the creation of living creatures of the waters, fish, great whales, etc., and winged fowls that fly in the open firmament to multiply in the earth on the fifth day of creation, as seen in the vision of, by Moses, as compared to the threefold pattern of the tabernacle, plate one. Okay, so now if you look right here on the fifth day, and if you have um, some charts in front of you, sometimes it's a little hard to see it. But you, what you have here is it's the three full living creatures of the creation of the waters. So you have on the bottom, the amphibian plane, that's one, the large swimming animals, and then the or ornithological and biological kings, that's the large swimming animals and the birds, all right? So that's your fifth day. And we talked about it a little bit last week, how that's when sound came into the creation. Well, if you look on the veil and you see those birds, birds do have a song. And so that's when that the songs of birds came into the creation. And it would have been. And I, I just want to also, if you look at, um, this is an upward plate, but if you look at the uh, spirit law in the most holy place and then you come down to the court roundabout what you have there and you can't see it in this picture as well but there is a dove coming down facing down and so this dove then is spirit animation and it shows you see on the on the day before that on the fourth day there was no spirit animation it was inanimate all the way through there on those days. But when you come to this fifth day, then you have spirit anima animation or light life being brought forth. And so you can liken that over to the fifth dispensation, right? This is the fifth day. You're gonna take it over to the fifth dispensation and you're gonna recognize that that's when that life or that animation of the soul took place on the day of Pentecost and from then on, okay? So you have that spirit of animation animating the earth plane on that fifth day, okay? All right, keep reading, please. Beginning at the bottom of plate one, I'm sorry, plate 10E in the outer court, we illustrate the amphibian plane which means both in the waters and upon the earth, wherein and whereupon the threefold plane, which means both, okay. Both hey, Mr. In the waters, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Go ahead, read it again, please. Let me reread. Beginning at the bottom of plate 10E, in the outer court, we illustrate the amphibian plane, which means both in the waters and upon the earth, wherein and whereupon the threefold manifestation of Yahweh began upon the physical earth plane. Here, the small inanimate creatures were formed as compared to the lifeless sacrifice on the altar in the pattern, plate 1E. Like as the priest was anointed with holy anointing oil, representing the Holy Spirit before he entered the holy place, Plate 1C, so were these inanimate creatures, plate 10E, quickened by the spirit of animation and they became animated or living creatures as shown in plate 10C, which the waters brought forth after their kind, of moving creatures, great whales, and winged fowl after his kind that fly in the open firmament of the heavens, plate 10B. Okay, so can you see there, according to the pattern now, he's got the formation of insects and the inanimate things in the earth plane before the spirit of animation comes in, then that was that sacrifice. He's, he was looking at it as the sacrifice on the altar. So you got that death right there. And then he comes in and he animates the creation and gives life to the uh, animals in the waters and the fowls of the air. So you ha also have that uh, resurrection or giving of life in this plate. Okay. I hope everybody sees that and that we're, we're going right along with this. Okay.
Go ahead. Excuse me. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Dr. Snyder, I'm sorry for interrupting, but um, uh, I could not see the uh, the plate on the fifth day and you were saying something important there with the dub, which I missed. So I got my chart, which you gave me, and I'm now looking at it. Uh, could you just repeat what you said about the dub? Because I'm looking at the plate now. Yes, sure. So go to the most holy place first on the chart, please, Lenore. Thank you. So this is your all the way across here on the days of creation. You have spirit law. That's what that heart represents. It represents spirit law, right? So she's got a good right. picture of it. So on this particular day, you have spirit law. Go back to five. Plate 10. Yep. All right. So you have spirit law. And then if you go down into the court roundabout, because everything comes from the throne of Yahweh, you know, Yahweh's spirit is everything in this creation. There's he's causing everything to exist just the way that it is. And for us to have a peek of it is just an amazing thing. I mean, you think about all the animals that were brought into life on that fifth day. It is a, all the animals in this creation, all the things that they show forth, all the little creatures that, you know, it's just amazing that that great spirit of Yahweh can just quicken the, you know, the spirit animation and bring all those things that were dead to life. And it's a great thing that it happened on the fifth day too. So we know that that was the fifth day. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting off, off, off course a little bit. So then in the court roundabout, right there where it says spirit animation, you see a dove right there. And in some of the charts, the dove is actually pointing down. So you can see that spirit comes down into the creation and animates the creation then. So you see where it comes from. It comes from the most holy place, the throne of Yahweh, all the way down to the earth where we live. That's the spirit of anima animation in the creation. It's Yahweh. All right. Um, do you see that? Yeah. Yes, I do see that. Okay, great. Thank you. And anybody that has any questions can ask me. I, I don't know all that much, but I'm learning. <laughs> okay. So let's go to the next paragraph, please, Dennis. Sure. The birds of many colors on the second veil, plate 10b, that fly in the open firmament are compared to the angelic figures woven on the second veil and around the four sides of the interior walls of the pattern of tabernacle, plate 1b. Finally, Shown in the most holy place, plate 1a, the law of the spirit proceeding from Yahweh imbues and establishes the kingship among these creatures with, in, with instinct to care for their young and replenish the earth, as shown in plate 10a. Each of these living creatures has a king and queen among them as reflected by Yahshua the Messiah and Jerusalem above, which is his bride. Thus, the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Okay, so you have all those creatures being animated by the spirit of Yahweh and coming on down, he's, set, he's setting up kings on the earth plane among the um, creatures so that we can see that he is just like Adam was over all the animals that was in the scripture reading today. Um, that made him king of kings because all the animals had a king king that made Adam king of kings. And Adam was a figure of Yahshua. And that makes Yahshua the true king of kings. And if you look at the way he even puts it here, um, each of these living creatures has a king and a queen among them as reflected by Yahshua the Messiah and Jerusalem above, which is his bride. So that's what that's showing you. It's taking us over to the time when Yahshua the Messiah, after he goes through his death, burial, and resurrection, he puts his spirit in you through the preaching of the gospel, and you are now that bride of Yahshua in him. All right, so... 
All right, let's go to the uh, next plate 11. And I can read uh, plate 11 if everybody can hear me. Okay. Okay, so um, <clears throat> plate number 11 illustrates the creation of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth after its kind, and man on the sixth day of creation as seen in the vision by Moses and compared to the threefold pattern of the tabernacle, plate number one beginning at the bottom of the plate, number 11E, the outer court, Yahweh Elohim brought forth man and animal from earth, from, excuse me, from mother earth. Elohim breathed into them the breath of life or the spirit entered into them a division between body and soul plates 11D and 11D. And okay, and I, they, wanna, I, I wanna stop you right there. Mm -hmm. um, so what you have here on the sixth day, you have the threefold living creatures of the earth and it's really the plate is spirit, soul and body. That's what it's showing us here with the man being uh, made in Yahweh Elohim's image. And if you look at, if you're coming down, um, if you're coming down, it's an upward plate, but if you, when you come down, well, let's, let's start at the bottom. So you have body and Yahshua breathed onto his disciples. Do you see that right on there? And it's showing you, and, and that shows you that he actually did that because mm -hmm. you have the example of Adam doing that when he breathed into their nostrils, the breath of life, and he became a living soul. All right. And then the soul, then you have all these attributes. And I don't know if it's not on this chart, but some of the charts have the attributes right in here. They're imbued with the attributes. A soul has that instinct to love their offspring and replenish the earth. And it also has uh, the capacity for uh, wisdom, intelligence, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. That's that middle portion of this plate. All right. And then you go up and you got spirit on the top of it. So the, the plate then in 11, the simple threefoldness of it is spirit, soul, and body. And, you know, it would do us well to get the simple threefoldness of all these um, because then you can go from there to anything that is is on the chart to talk about but you have to see that it goes by the pattern first and this particular one of course is the sixth day where adam is created and i don't know if anybody else wants to have something to say right there before we go on there's a couple more paragraphs but if anybody else had something that they wanted to bring out i don't know who worked on plate 11 i did uh my name is jermaine i oh, worked hi. on plate 11 oh good so um do you want to he didn't get to do it yet right no he didn't get to do it yet so we can do that um i was wondering if lucy had something to say about the previous plate uh, okay. uh, dr snyder hi bonnie yes. no i really don't have anything to add right now okay that's fine thank you yes uh sybil um uh so those heart like we're looking, I'm looking at plate 11 and uh, uh, the holy place there. Uh, those hearts that are on there, are, 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 were you saying that they represent the attributes? I'm not clear on that. The hearts on the top of the chart uh, in the most holy place represent spirit law. And if you look at plate two, she's going to bring that up there, we're at plate two, you have all the attributes. That's that's what spirit law is. It's all the attributes in a set position. So it's going to accomplish the will of Yahweh, which is what these, these attributes are. And the will of Yahweh is salvation of the soul. So all your plates are going to be, there's going to be something in there that's going to show you that this purpose is to save the soul. You know, if you just look at the animals being animated and given life, what a great thing for us to look at. We can then know 
through physical life because we're given physical life, we can then have that example and know that it's possible to have spiritual life. And that's the whole point of looking at any of this stuff is that it's, you're going to see the will of Yahweh going on from beginning to end or the purpose of Yahweh from beginning to end. And that's what the chart says, manifesting his purpose from beginning to end. All right. Okay. And the attributes that you're looking at, if you, if you come down into the second plate where you have on plate 11 now, oh, plate no, 11. Plate 11, yeah, that's what, yeah. If you, you've got spirit law in the top there and you always right. have spirit in the most holy place, because that's the dwelling place of Yahweh. That's the throne of Yahweh in a type. So what you have is then that the attributes then are imbued within the soul of man. See how man was, was made in the likeness and image of Yahweh Elohim? He was yes, made yes. spirit, soul, body. So the okay. soul part of it is where those attributes then come down to. They come down into the soul of man. Those okay. are your, the, that's your, the makeup of the soul. All right. And there's a okay. lot of great explanation to all this stuff but yeah yes. you know uh we're going to try to stay <laughs> stay on course okay a okay bit. just one more thing um okay. Dr. Snyder. Sure. um yeah okay i asked that question because i had um recently uh we, we were dealing with hebrews 4 and 12 where it talks about division of uh soul and spirit and body and uh in that chapter and when we went here, when you were explaining, um, and I looked at that holy place there with the, the hearts, uh, which is the attributes, um, uh, that's what, uh, why I asked the question. But I know we, we're not, we're, I'm with you here, but that uh, caused me to ask the question because that came up Hebrews 4. And I wanted to know, to see that on the plate too. You know, well, it, it is right on the veils. You can you see the division the, in the most holy place. He made a division between soul and spirit. That's the most holy. Right. You know these these veils in here are your lines of demarcation as far as understanding what he's doing according to the pattern. When when there's a veil, then there's a change at the veil, or or you know something is there's an explanation at the and so in this on the first veil. Um, you have the division between body and soul. And if let's read Hebrews 12, please. Thank let's you. Read. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with a great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh. Okay, so would you read that again? And I'm going to interrupt you. There's a couple things in here that are very important to look at. When Paul was explaining this, you know, we have to know who he's talking to, what time, <laughs> all these things. We should always bear that in mind. Okay, uh, re start reading again, please. Hebrews 12 and 1. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's right. We are, the, the Jews were compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Go ahead on. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. Mm -hmm. And Great. let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So we are in a race, but it's not a race for time as far as it, it's a race to try to finish. Let us run with patience this race that is set before us to stay on course, to keep with the truth, see. Go ahead and read. Looking unto Yahshua, the author and finisher of our faith. And so that's your key right there to staying on the course. Looking unto Yahshua. 
He's the author and the finisher of our faith. And we know through another place where he's written in Hebrew, without faith, it's impossible to please Yahweh. But the witnesses have given us or built up our faith. That's why he's talking about we're so we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. All right. Keep reading, please. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Okay. Now, did you ever think about this? Think about this. Who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. What mm. kind of joy would you have enduring a cross? That death, that horrible death that he died. Well, he knew that once he went through that death, he was going mm -hmm. go, to overcome through his resurrection and bring the kingdom back mm -hmm. and also give his spirit to mankind. He was mm -hmm. going to share his spirit and that is a joy for him it's a joy for him to share his spirit with us yes ma'am but it's awesome to think about <laughs> some of these things so keep reading because we still haven't got down to the verse that she was talking about read on despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of yahweh read for consider him that endured such contradiction of sin. Okay, so I don't know where the dividing of asunder of soul and spirit is, but is it in it the is in Hebrew? I'm sorry. It's in Hebrews 4 and 12, the fourth chapter. Okay. okay, go ahead and read 4 and 12 then. Thank you. I got the wrong verse, but it was good. <laughs> yes, it was. 4 and 12. For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Okay, and so the word of Yahweh is quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it can cut between soul and spirit. Now, you know, there's a lot of doctrines out there that say that's not, it's impossible. But for Yahweh, it's not impossible. There's a difference between soul and spirit, not a difference. It's the same spirit in operation, but you have to see that it comes down into a lesser state. Soul is a lesser state than spirit, but that's mm -hmm. what he has given us. He's given us that soul and he's the one that can divide asunder of soul and spirit. See? So anyway, I, I hope you see what he's talking about there. Is that good enough? Yeah. Cause on this plate is showing a division, right? Yes, it is. It's the division between soul and spirit. Yep. Uh, I, I, th I thank you for that because I, I wanted to see where it was on the chart, on the okay. 40 plate chart. Yep. It's on the veils there. Um, both the veils. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's go back to the reading in the textbook. There's one more paragraph. Finally. So, and Elohim breathed into the into them the breath of life or the spirit entered into them a division between body and soul plates 11d and 1d so can and you they, see how when he breathed into the spirit into them it made the division between spirit and soul that's how he explained it mm -hmm. when he breathed into them that made the division between spirit and soul okay go ahead and read and they became living creatures as shown in the holy place, plate 11C. Excuse me, Bonnie, can I add something? I mean, make a comment, because you just said something and I don't think, I don't know if you misspoke or not. It's the division between body and soul, not spirit and soul when he breathed into them, right? Breathe breath of life or the spirit entered into them a division between body and soul. Is that correct? Right. Yep. Okay. okay. Right. I misspoke. I'm sorry. Thank you for that. No problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. And where is he reading mm -hmm. from? He's um, reading from the textbook on page 66. Mm -hmm. Volume. Volume. Volume one. Volume one, yes. Okay. Finally. Volume one, page 66. I need to write this down. Okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Finally, the divine law, as shown in the Ark of the Covenant, in the most holy place, being the throne of Yahweh or seat 
of authority proven by the pattern of the tabernacle was imbued or filled in the mind of both animal and man establishing, excuse me, establishing <clears throat> an instinct to care for their offspring, <clears throat> to multiply and replenish the earth or build up the earth. This okay, shows- so Everybody, mm -hmm. can everybody see that? That we, we already talked about it, but it's the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place. And it comes on down and it abuse within man and animal to an instinct to care for their offspring and replenish the earth, all right? So that's part of that spirit coming down. Put it right within man. Okay, go ahead and read, please. Mm -hmm. This shows a division between soul and spirit as shown on the second veil, plate 11B and plate 1B. Okay, so now you've got your division between um, soul and spirit on the second veil. This shows that division, all right? Okay, keep reading. Whereas the man innocent in, con in conscience or mortality or soul was made in the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim, having divine control or dominion over the fish of the sea, fall of the air, the cattle and, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. He was made a little lower than the angels with a disposition to serve Yahweh Elohim as shown in the most holy place, plate 11a. Okay, and then we're gonna read that last part again, but uh, um, we wanna go back up to, and the man innocent in conscience and soul was made in the image of Yahweh Elohim. So you have him being created in Yahweh's image. And you know, he's created innocent, but he's not righteous. You know what I mean? It's a, there's a difference between being innocent and being righteous. And so that's just something to think about as we're going along. Um, but that's how Yahweh Elohim created the man. They were innocent in the garden. They mm -hmm. didn't have, they didn't know, <laughs> they didn't know right from wrong, all right? Um, so then let's go ahead and read the last. And it's, it's uh, Hebrews 12, 4 and 12, what we just read. So go ahead and mm -hmm. read. As Paul wrote in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents or desires of the heart. Thus, the evening and the morning were the sixth day, Genesis 1 and 31. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, whoever had, you had played 11? I had, yes, I had played, played 11. Okay. You can go ahead then, unless there's any questions or something you want to bring out about the reading, anybody? Okay, I just wanted to um, make um, one comment when you were talking about, um, you know, what, what Yahshua went through um, to bring mankind into an understanding of him and, and the um, pain that he had to undergo. It reminds me of the way people talk about, you know, childbearing. I mean, I never had a kid, but when I see a, a pregnant woman, I thought, oh man, what well, she's into is for some help. But she's looking past that. I'm looking like, oh, this ain't worth it. Aren't there kids to adopt out there? You know, hey, somebody needs a home. She's got to be looking past it to even, I mean, you do it once and then do it again. Like people have six, seven kids. You've got to be in the height of that pain Look, be looking forward to this beautiful child that you're going to have and to love and to take care of and to raise. 
Yep, you got to be good. looking at your purpose. Yep. Good example. Oh, and I would just wanted to say, um, when we read the textbook, can we just read it without you like putting like your own in? Because you taught, you said intents and desires, and it's not really the same thing. So can we just read it, what it says? And then when you're discussing it, then you could put in all the other kind of stuff. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Snyder, may I ask a question, please? Yes, sir. Did I hear you say in the garden, Adam was, um, he wasn't in the state of righteousness. He was innocent. Yeah. Did I hear you say he was not righteous though? Is that what I heard? Well, as far as we know, he was, he was created in innocence. They were innocent in the garden, which means they had no sin on them. And you know, you know what innocent is, but innocent is not the same as righteousness. Okay. Righteous is what's right according to the purpose. And, you know, you could split hairs about it if you want to. <laughs> no, um, I don't want to. I just thought, I just want to make sure I heard you right that, that yeah. he was that he wasn't righteous, but he was innocent. Right. Well, that's okay. the way Dr. Kinley expresses it, that he was okay. created innocent. Okay. Yeah, I know, but I, I never did hear about that righteousness, though. That's what, that's what perked up my ear when you said he was innocent, but he wasn't righteous. You know? Well, one of the reasons I brought it up is um, a lot of times we look at innocence as being righteous. If you know, just it's innocent. There is a difference between being innocent and being righteous. That's right. So. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll have to study that. Thanks a lot. Okay. Go ahead then. Oh, then. so I think I think my 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 portion is is done. Am I correct? Um. Is that what you were going to do? Is read the textbook? Yeah, that's that's all that I was going to do is read the textbook. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. So, do you see that if you're looking at the sixth day, then um, that it's spirit, soul, body? That's the basic threefoldness of it, right? And the spirit mm -hmm. you have in the most holy place, you have spirit law, and it comes down and animates um, the man and the beast in this particular plate that you have the spirit of animation coming on down. And it shows you that Yahshua came on down. He came on down into the creation before he, you know, before he came in and went through a death, burial and resurrection, he had already been coming on down, you know, as that great spirit of life. So I think it's a great example of it. Um, maybe just one more thing, if we're, if you think you're finished with yours. Mm -hmm. um, you have, uh, let me see, threefold living creatures. I just want to bring in, and this is from uh, a paper that Terry did, and um, but I think it's important to look at this stuff. And he's he's been looking at the uh, dispensations and ages, and on the fifth day, and he's likened unto a better way to to understand the ages and dispensations is to understand that they go according to the days of creation. So he's got for the fifth day, which is where we are right now, right? The, the fowl and the fish multiplied as the souls of believers and unbelievers multiplied. So can you see how that's the fifth day? You need a dispensation chart, Lenore. And you're asking, are you asking me this question? No, I'm asking everybody. Oh, okay. <laughs> now I can see it by. Okay. All right, so you've got your dispensations across here, the first Adamic, Noahic, Melchizedek priesthood, and Abrahamic promise, the old covenant, and the Mosaic um, age of fourth age there, or the fourth dispensation. So then in the fifth dispensation is likened unto the fifth day, which is what we've been talking about. And the fifth day is Yahshua, uh, oh, wait a minute, oh, that's, that's, I'm looking at a different place. The fifth day. The fowl and the fish multiplied as the souls of believers and unbelievers multiplied. So can you see how there's a multiplication on the fifth day? And then when he brings it into the fifth day, um, according to the 
um, dispensations, then that would be a multiplication of believers and unbelievers. All right, that's your fifth day. So you're looking at the different um, natures of the animals, you know, so some are vicious and then some are not. So that's how you're saying believers and unbelievers? Well, the fowl uh, and the fish multiplied as okay. the souls of men multiplied. You could just okay. say the souls of men multiplied. All right. And then on the sixth day, the beast rose as did the man and his wife, like the papacy rose as did Yahshua and his assembly. That was your sixth dispensation, all right? Or the sixth day. You can see how that there's, that's what happened. All right, I just wanted to bring that in because I thought it was good according to the ages, which we've been looking at. All right. So well, I'm sorry, to, uh, you lost me. What do you mean the papacy rose? All right. The, if you look at the sixth day, which right. is where we right there on okay on 12 right right the beast rose as did the man and his wife that's what that's what rose up on the sixth day yeah he's born the among beast, the animals the beast rose up and then the man rose up right right and white like the papacy rose that's your beast oh okay right. papacy rose and Yahshua and his assembly rose okay Okay. And you got him with between the, the lion and the lamb. Yep. And both of them. The lion, the lamb, the lion, the lamb. Yep. Yep. So one. Dr. One, one. Dr. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dr. Doc, Dr. Sybil. Oh, um, thanks. Um, so Dr. Snyder, um, when you were talking about the multiplication, which um, I'm trying to follow that principle, uh, you're saying uh, with the dispensation and ages chart there with the Let's go fifth back to the chart, Lenore. Fifth. Go back to the dispensations chart, please. Okay. All right. So all I'm saying is the fifth day, which we've been looking at, the fifth day was a multiplication, or it was the fowl and the fish multiplied. Right? That's what happens on the fifth day. And then you had the fowls come in. Mm -hmm. The fowls, the fish, the, the uh, swimming animals. That was a multiplication of life right there. Right. I see that. And as the souls of believers and unbelievers, they also multiplied in the fifth dispensation. Okay. I needed that repeated. That's all. Okay. Thank you. So that is, you can liken the fifth and sixth day unto the fifth and sixth dispensations that's what he was getting at can i add something i'm sorry dr snyder yes love. i was wondering uh when you look at the sixth day the plate it's a, a plate 11 uh -huh. plate 11 has a number of scriptures in it and i think it would be well to yeah, read, to read those the scriptures yeah, that's for right. understanding of what we are looking at right I was going to say well, that's that a good idea. I mean, I, I didn't know how much time yeah. you wanted to take or whatever you want to do, but it's a good idea to me. Yeah, because some of us don't understand that a veil means a division, although we have curtains in our house. Right. Yeah. You know, and so if we would, if we could just read those scriptures beginning from the court roundabout right. and moving up, I think that would be a yeah, great read. help what in exactly understanding is what about? this plate is pointing to. Right. Okay. Sounds yeah. good to me. So you're talking about the sixth day, right? Yes, like, indeed. Thank you so much. Okay. That sounds good. All right, so Genesis. it's if you start at the bottom of the plate, mm -hmm. you have First Corinthians fifteen forty seven and Genesis two and seven. Mm -hmm. And then and, there is something where it says. Yahshua breathed on the disciples. There's a uh -huh. scripture right under that. Yep. Yeah. John, but John even 20. to even to read the whole thing, it says the body of Adam from Mother Earth. Mm-hmm. To, to like just see what's on the chart. Yeah, that's good. Yep, that is good. Thank you. Thank you. So Go the scripture again, again, please. Genesis 2 and 7. And Yahweh Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, 
and man became a living soul. Okay. Okay. First if, anybody, if anybody has any explanation or something you want to bring out about it, you're free to do it. Right, because I think as we read the scriptures, uh, I think it will, it will, this will come alive, in other words, as I see yeah. it. Well, he yep. breathed into him, and on the chart it says, Yahshua breathed on the disciples, and he said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. So it's right. just pointing here that he's receiving the, the animation, the, the, the physical, and you know, enlightening. He's, he's yes. a, a living creature that you right. have made after the image of his father, Yahweh Elohim. Right, because this was, this was the, the physical creation uh, this was the only man that was created in that way. Yeah, he's the first Adam. He's the first yes, man. Absolutely. So as, as we read up, beginning at 1 Corinthians uh, verses 15 to 47, if we have time to do that. Yeah, we have time to do that. We'll make time. Thank you, Doc. 1 Corinthians 15, 47. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is Yahshua from heaven. Mm. Yeah, so you see in, in, the, in the bottom of that, it says Yahshua breathed on the disciples. So you can see, you can see that that first Adam is pointing to that second Adam. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please read on, Doc. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think this is what John 20 and 22. John 20, 22, yeah. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Could you, could you start back a little so that we can pick up the train of thought? Verse 20. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw Yahshua. Then said Yahshua to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Now you see right there, Doc, you can see this is after his death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah. Because it said he looked. They looked at his hands and his side. Mm -hmm. So he was letting them know that, in other words, that was him. And so if we could continue to read on uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, verses uh, 15, I mean, they they first, what is it? 1 Corinthians 15 47. Uh, to 47. 1 Corinthians 15 and 47. Uh, no, it's fifteen sixty. It's from fifteen. It's from verses fifteen to forty-seven, Doc. I think. I think is that what I'm looking at, or am I? Showing a natural yeah, body, oh, raised a spiritual yeah. body, so it's showing that he's a natural yeah. body. It's yeah, only I, I, verse forty-seven that's on the chart. Oh, that's, that's right. Okay, because again, once again, that's Yahshua when when he's uh, breathing on his disciples. Once again, that is after his death, burial, and resurrection. So you're looking at that spiritual body versus, I mean, you're looking the at the physical, physical body pointing to that spiritual body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we move up, please? Hebrews, to the next veil. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul <laughs> and spirit, and mm -hmm. of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Now, see, isn't that beautiful? Because you see, you see on the veil, it says division between body and, and soul. soul. Right. So that's what we're, to, we're that's what we're speaking of there. See that division there, because we know that a veil divides, and this is the first veil that we're uh, that that we're looking at, and it is right there on the veil. What what the subject matter is, mm -hmm. 
And you're seeing that division between body and soul. Why? Because it said when he breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, he became a living soul, and then he was placed in the garden. Mm -hmm. We are so blessed, people. We are so blessed to look, be able to look at something and apply it to what is laid down in the scriptures. And, and I'm just especially happy that Brother Jermaine is here so that he can see these, this plate come alive. And you see on the second veil here, it says division between soul and spirit. There are several scriptures on that veil. In addition to uh, Genesis, the first chapter, I think, verses 25 to 27. So if we can please read this, please. Can we read those scriptures? You are. It says Acts 17, 28, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. No, I mean, you can see them. They're right here. John 10, 34. I got John 10, 34. Okay, it says Acts 17, 28. Which one do you want first? Well, X, it says Acts 17, 28. Okay, Acts 17, 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are his offspring. Okay. Okay. It's at five. It's Acts 5, 17 through 24. Okay. Acts 5, 17. Then the high priest like rose up and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in a common prison. But the angel of Yahweh by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. I think it, it's it X, is it is it's A C T S Acts seventeen yeah, twenty eight seventeen and twenty eight and the other Acts is seventh and eighth chapter. Yeah, Acts. Hmm. Acts seven, seven Acts seven and and eight. Seven and is that seven, seven and eight? eight? Wait, let me get my thingy. No, yeah, I made it as no, big as I can make it. Looks like 748. Is yeah, there, a, looks is like there an Acts 748? Yes, it's Acts. And the first, the first scripture on there is John 1 and 9. And then the following scripture is John 1834. And then the third scripture is Acts 7 and 48. That is on the left side. Of the veil. Where, where do you see John? I see First Corinthians, First Corinthians. Uh, at the in the most holy John ten thirty four. John ten thirty four. Okay. And then before John twenty uh, ten and thirty four is John one and nine. John one and nine. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Okay. okay. Now you can see that. In that, uh, uh, that's also uh, pointing back to that uh, fourth day. See what, what uh, and you see that greater light in the most holy place. Oh. That's pointing to Yahshua the Messiah. Right. Okay. Can we read on, please? Uh, the next, the next uh, uh, scripture is John. 10 and 34. Where are you getting these scriptures? Okay, all right. Veil, John 10, 34. The then Acts 8, 7, 11. 48, right? Then Acts yes. 17, 28, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Yes, ma'am. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. John 10 and 34. Yahshua answered them, Is it not written in your law I said, ye are Elohims, mm -hmm. ye are Elohim. Okay, now see up here, this is where 
Elohim, when you go back in Genesis, that let us make man in our likeness and our image. Right. So because who, why? Because Adam was the son of Elohim. Right. Can we continue to read, please? The next scripture will be Acts 7 and 48. Acts 7. Acts 7 and 48. How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, is saith the prophet. Okay, so once again, you're, you're looking at uh, the most holy place, and you're looking at the man, Adam, and, and he is surrounded by the totality of the creation. And it says, uh, 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 Adam, let me see. I'm trying to, I'm trying to see the, the, um, the, the description of the plate. Because it's it's right here. Um, it says in the image of place. Elohim. Yes, right. Okay. And so now what is what that's Genesis what? That's what we just got to talking about. Genesis 1, 26 and 27, mm. made in yes, his image that's and what, his likeness. Yes, ma'am. That's what it says. And so then on the right side of your veil here, then you have Acts 17 and 24. Okay, X. and 24. Elohim that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Yahweh of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can see heaven and the earth being made manifest here. And so you see that the, the totality of it, this was not made. Uh, uh, this was not of the man itself. So if we yeah, can go to we... 1 Corinthians, right, uh, 3, verses 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians verse, uh, 3, 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. Believe not that you are the temple of Elohim and that the spirit of Elohim dwelleth in you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And the then spirit. the last Yahweh. scripture there. And 17, right? If any man defile yeah. the temple of Elohim, him shall Yahweh destroy. For the temple of Elohim is holy, which temples ye are. Hallelujah. Mm. And then and then if we will go to First Corinthians six, uh verses what what is that, six nineteen and twenty? And that will finish the scriptures on the veil. First Corinthians six nineteen and twenty. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is mm -hmm. in you, which ye have of Yahweh, and ye are not your own. Hallelujah. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, mm -hmm. glorify Yahweh in your body and in your spirit, which are Yahweh's. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Uh, I didn't mean to take this over, but I just no, think it is great. Since we are sitting here looking at uh, these these charts, I mean, looking at these plates, we need to understand what we are speaking of when we're looking. These are not just pictures. This is a living, moving creation that we're looking at. And by the way, it's when it said, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? When you look at the most holy place, isn't that where you see the temple? That's right. It's the Hallelujah. most holy place. Yeah. Thank you, brethren. Yeah. And I, I, and I hope this, this, this was a help to Brother Jermaine as well. Yeah, good I would. Morning. Yes. Good, mo good morning. Uh, I'd, I would like to say a few things concerning uh, the Yahweh Elohim breathed into man and he became a living soul. Mm hmm. It is perplexing to someone who doesn't look into it deeply because um, that living seems to be just his innocence, his existence in innocence and not with righteousness, which would be the uh, 
his embodying the Holy Spirit. Although it's the first Adam, pure, you know, innocent, then um, what we're looking at is that uh, the Holy Spirit himself went back and preached to the spirits in prison. Mm -hmm. Now, we are told in uh, was it First Timothy chapter 2, 14, that Adam wasn't deceived, but the woman was. Yet he sinned. Now, that Adam that wasn't deceived, to me, is Yahshua in him. But it is that, uh, was he just not deceived at that time or for the rest of his life, he was never ever deceived for the 930 years. Another concern is this. When Yahshua was nailed to the cross, that Yahshua obviously was his body, named Yahshua, just as his soul is named Yahshua, just as his spirit is named Yahshua. The latter two of which were not nailed to the cross. His soul was not nailed to the cross, nor his spirit, the Holy Spirit himself. But his body was Yahshua, so he, he couldn't, he cannot lie in saying, I am he who was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of um, hell and of death in Revelation 1, 18. So that body, well, whatever soul it had, it seems to have been just like the soul of Adam. And whatever spirit was in that body saying, oh, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I don't see ever in history where that prayer was ever answered because those wicked persons around him were not forgiven. But nevertheless, he was innocent. What I'm trying to say is that uh, that spirit went and preached to the spirits in prison for those six hours, from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon. The Holy Spirit was in, in, in the realm of eternity, so to speak, pre preaching to the those who were in need of the glad tidings, you know, like Noah and all of them coming up, possibly even right back to Adam after he sinned. Yet, on the cross for six hours, we had a threefold reality of spirit, soul, and body. So, <laughs> the solution to this apparent predicament seems to be in Galatians, Chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Yahshua the Messiah. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but the Messiah liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the, did it say faith? I don't remember. Whatever else the verse said. I live should by not, faith of the Son yeah, of Yahweh, who loved me. Of and Yahweh, gave who loved me and gave himself me. for me. Yes. No, no, um, that itself is not or cannot contradict, cannot justifiably contradict Romans chapter, what is it? Chapter about eight, uh, verse nine, which says, we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah dwells in us. So, It needs deep thought it, and it needs concerted effort on, on our minds, you know, several of us put together to work out this. Is it that um, all right, the children of Israel, they were insulated, so to speak, like an electrical cord in the, in, in the cloud. They were baptized unto Yahweh in the cloud and in the sea, but they were in the cloud. So that insulation or being embodied or circle around uh, protected them from the physical sea. But they were also baptized in the sea. If I have a bottle of milk seal and I dump it in the ocean, there's no salt water getting into it, but it is baptized in the sea, but it's insulated by the bottle. 
I don't know all about, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't know about all that, but I do know that Adam sinned. He died. He pointed yeah. out his, he pointed out his, his bride, you know, he's an accuser of the brethren, the one, Hey, she's the one he's pointing her out. And in yeah. Job 31, 33 says, if I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding mm -hmm. my iniquity in my bosom. So he comes in, he's a type of Yahshua the Messiah. He willingly dies for his bride. And then he needs a savior just like everybody else. Yes. He needs a savior. And that's why. Because I mean, if he if he did it, well, what do we need Yahshua for? I mean, he didn't even save Eve. She had to go through childbearing and pain and suffering. They were cast out of the garden. They didn't live in the garden anymore. He was an example. He was a type. He was a figure. I mean, the book says that he was a figure. Because I know people used to say, oh, he's the Messiah. He's the, he's, the, he's the Savior. No, no, he's not. He's the not the Savior. Uh, he's a type. No, he's however. a good type. He's a wonderful type. And Dr. Kinley said they were all sinners, and that's all he had. So he's a good well, type. All right. The, 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 um, the question that surfaces, unmistakably surfaces for all of us to eventually answer is, was Adam in need of a savior when he was created? He was just innocent, mm -hmm. you see? But Yahweh's, so, Yahweh's got a purpose so, that there's gonna be salvation. So there's gotta be yes. a problem. Yeah, so, so it is, it seems to be a predicament, but as, as I see, there is a, uh, once we're born twice, we'll die once. So to be born once, he was born once by way of creation. He was innocent, but he would still need to be born twice the second time with the glad tidings, which Yahshua himself eventually did between beginning uh, from nine in the morning to three in the afternoon and ever after in or out of physical bodies. You see, Adam, never was the savior. He is the creature, but he has the name. And Yahshua uses that appellation, Adam, as the second Adam. Just as how Yahweh Elohim uses the appellation Abraham as himself Yahweh, that's not his name. His name never was Abraham. But in Abraham's bosom doesn't mean in Abraham, the literal physical Abraham, but in Yahweh's bosom, just because of the word faith. He's the father of the faithful. Physically, that was the physical Abraham. Spiritually, it's Yahweh. So it's what the sister asked. I don't know who asked it. Yahweh, that's Yahweh Elohim, of course. Yeah. Breathed yeah. into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. What kind of living? Is it just the physical living that was sinless and still in need of the presence and perpetual reality of Yahshua resurrected in him. So I'm going to exit this discussion. I have to leave here on some business, but we are told the secret things mm -hmm. belong to Yahweh and those that are revealed belong to us and our children. <laughs> and that's where I leave it. I have to shelve many questions and um, I hope we will get through with this one if not now some other time thanks very much all right is, is somebody ready for plate 12 hey, I just had um, some questions about this if nobody knows you can just say I don't know but I'm, I'm looking at this chart here and you know this is the first time I'm really taking time to look at this carefully. And the thing that gets me, very simple thing, he's got, you got him down in the court roundabout, he's got a lion there, okay? And and he is Yahweh breathed on dis disciples, the breath of life. Um, he's made from Mother Earth. Then when he goes into the holy place, he's got the lamb and the lion, he's between them. He's made, he's got dominion over everything. They've got an, an elephant there, they got trees and everything. It looks like, 
uh, is that hills or it looks like pyramids but anyway I, I i just like if anybody knows and then in the most holy place they they got him and he is he is the image of elohim and it's and they have him between the lamb and the lion and they're laying down together they're not fighting or anything anybody know anything about that No, but I see you missed the big elephant. I'll look it up. Yeah, I did say there was an <laughs> elephant there. There's oh, an okay. elephant. I didn't hear that. But okay. I just, I just, you know, I know that the lamb and the lion, that they're going to lay down together and everything. And it looks like everything's cool. Nobody's, you know, the, the lion isn't looking at the lamb. And it looks like they're not eating each other. When you, when you read the book, it says the herb shall be good for you. You know, everybody's a vegetarian. <laughs> Every, a doctor, if you don't mind. Everything is in perfect harmony okay. in the sixth day before. And remember, you're looking at the earth before the transgression. Right. So if you're looking at the earth plane before the transgression, yeah, then you're the looking 50s. at everything. The man having dominion over everything on the earth plane and in it, then it you don't see any kind of you're not going to see no, uh, mos the, no mosquitoes no no <laughs> none of that everything is in perfect harmony everything what great. yahweh created was good and very good you do not see any opposition to anything until the transgression everything is in perfect harmony and yeah. if you will re if you will remember after the flood, Yahweh tells Noah, you know, like say now, in other words, the uh, relationship between man and beast is going to change. But prior okay. to the flood, the man ate of the, the herbs of the field. Yeah. And so now there was there was everything in was in perfect harmony until the transgression. I hope that helps. Yeah, that's helpful. And and you don't even see the sun. You see, you see it's like uh coming up here, but now everything's in light, everything's cool, everybody's happy. No problem. Well, it's uh the sixth day of creation. So you have beast and man. Beast reform first, then man. And that's what was read in the Elohim book. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, and you know that uh, when you when he taught he uses the sixth day and he used both I'm sorry, I'm sorry Lee, I, I accidentally I, I accidentally muted him. What happened? I saw him. Well, he's the king of kings. Okay, so he's uh, yeah. He I did that. I'm sorry. Who's talking? Me, but I, I accidentally um, muted him. I was trying to close everybody out because somebody had background noise. So the six, I mean, when you read back there, and it was page 66, plus the, uh, the one brother, did he ever get to go over his, <laughs> anyway. Uh, anyway, so you got the, uh, well, uh, but you, but I think it is important when you're going over the plates to make sure that you do uh, see everything in the plate and read the scriptures, you know, uh, like was done. Uh, but if you look in, uh, yeah, it says plate number 11. Uh, uh, right here. Yeah. So it just, uh, maybe he can go, oh, well, anyway. It says play 11 illustrates the creation of living creatures. See, so it's uh, even though it's focusing a lot on the man because man, spirit, soul, body, mm -hmm. uh, the creatures were made on the sixth day also. You understand? That's why Adam, I mean, uh, Yash, when he's born, he's born among the animals to fulfill this with Adam on the sixth day. Uh, he illustrates the creation of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth after its kind and man on the sixth day of creation as seen in the vision by moses as compared to the threefold pattern uh, of the tabernacle plate 1a beginning at the bottom of the plate plate number 1a 
the outer court or court roundabout. Yahweh Elam brought forth both man and animal from Mother Earth, okay, made from the dust of the earth. Elohim breathed into them the breath of life or spirit entered into them, a division between body and soul. And then he does plates 11D and 1D. That's the veil. And that's why you all are reading about that. You know, it's a division between body and soul. And they became living creatures as shown in the holy place. And now he's put them in the holy place. You also have, you might as well read Ecclesiastes 3 and was it 19, 18, I mean. Uh, read that. 318, you said? I think so. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that yes, yes. Elohim might try them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Keep reading. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yeah, yeah. beasts die and so does man. You understand? In other words, they're not. Uh, keep reading. They all have one breath, so that a man has no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. Now, man is made in the image and likeness, so he is different than a beast. But they still, he's just showing that they he gives them life, and they all, and he takes the spirit from them. You understand? Everybody, they die. In other words, they're physical. But uh, the inside, though, that's Yahweh's spirit. See, you're made of spirit, soul, body. And that's what he's showing on the chart and in the Elohim book. Read on. All go on to one place. All are of the dust and all turn to dust again. Mm -hmm. Who knoweth Read the on. spirit of man, they goeth upward. And the spirit of the beast, they goeth downward to the earth. And you say, well, we know Yahweh knoweth because he's the one that made everything. So I just wanted to show that just that it's in the Bible that they have, we don't have any, you know, we're no, we're creatures just like they are, but we are made in the image of likeness and they don't have to come to class to learn and have their soul saved. <laughs> you understand? I mean, of we spirit. have to come to class and hear the gospel preached, you know, that's why he called people without the Holy Spirit brute beast. In other words, it's just like you don't go out into a field and start preaching their pigs and cattle. They're not going to listen to nothing. You understand? Because they're beasts. Uh, and that's what it is with some people with demons in them. But go they're back going to according the, to spirit law. That's right. And that's what he's showing on the chart, more or less. You understand? It's six day. He made all of them. The uh, beast and then man, man's last. Okay, so that's why you got all those animals there, and they are in harmony at that time. There's no transgression yet. Right. Go back. Go back to the um, the chart. Elohim, Elohim book. Oh, back to the, okay. Back to yeah. Okay. So what he's done it and look and see you see well the chart too, and they could read whatever. Uh, and so you ought to read those things that he has on the chart, what he's saying there. Uh, you know, I mean, they did do that. You already did that. Uh, yes. But if you look, uh, well, just read the, go back to your chart and then they can read the thing in the other one book. You understand? Oh, and can I just say one thing? When um, Jonah, uh, in the last and that last couple of verses there, um, Jonah is like, you know, like, what did you send me for? You know, leave me alone. He's, he's still got an attitude. And, and Yahweh talks about, you know, that, you know, many people were saved and much cattle. So it's like he cared about these, you know, all these lambs that are offered up, all these cattle that was, it wasn't nothing. It wasn't like, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just only animals. He, he cared about them too. Their innocent That's sacrifices offer enough how Yahshua was innocent or without sin. What do you want? You want the chart. Uh, did Daryl, you had something to say? No, I don't have anything to say. I was just agreeing with Lenore because I remember he did care about the animals too. Uh-huh. That's right. 
Uh, he cared about the animal too, because he mentioned, he said, you don't care if there's so many animals there. To, right. To try to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even in the tsunami, he takes care of the animals. They know when it's time to get going. Okay. Okay, we're still on the plate 11, right? Okay, so you see where it says body of Adam made from Mother Earth. Well, so was the beast or the animals. Okay, it's all the sixth day. Okay, and then in, uh, right above his head, I think it has Genesis 2 and 7. You know, he formed man from the dust of the ground, breathes nostrils, the breath of life, he becomes a living soul. And says, and then it's reflected by Yahshua breathed on his disciples. You see that? And that's why the John 10, 20 and 22 is there. See, because it's after he resurrected, he's a spirit body and he's breathing on their bodies and says, receive ye the Holy Spirit to fulfill that he was Yahweh Elohim that breathed in the nostrils of Adam and he becomes a living soul. See that? In other words, he's fulfilling the scriptures. Okay. Uh, and it's testifying of him. And then you see on the veil there, Hebrews 4 and 12, which y'all already had read. See, but keep reading in the Ellen book. So we, what they've done is they, he's, uh, he's formed the body, then the holy place, he's saying a living soul. And so the, the veil is a division between body and soul. And then he has the Hebrews 4 and 12 there. Okay, go ahead and read the finally. Finally, the divine law as shown in the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place being the throne of Yahweh. Uh, or You can keep the, uh, Lenore, you can keep the pl colored plate that you like. That, then, and if that's what we, we want to see. And they can read it and you can see the plate. Yeah, yeah. I do like the plate. Thank you. So. Here's play. Now he says, finally, the divine law. Now you see that heart with the light around it? That's the divine law because there wasn't the Ten Commandments put in the Ark of the Covenant. You understand? Yes. So that's most holy principle. This is spirit law. Finally, the divine law. So he's going to talk about it. Read. Finally, the divine law is shown in the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place, being the throne of Yahweh or seat of authority proven by the pattern of the tabernacle was imbued in the mind of both animal and man, establishing an instinct to care for their offspring, to multiply and replenish the earth. And doesn't that what he gives, that's what he, the divine law he's given mankind and the animals or the mm. beast that he made on the sixth day, they, are, they, they have, uh, well, they, they, um, reproduce and that's a by divine law to reproduce and have an instinctive love for their offspring philoprogenitiveness you understand right. See? read on this shows a division between soul and spirit as shown on the second veil so you see the second veil says division between soul and spirit and so that whole plate is showing spirit soul body spirit most holy place soul in the holy place and body in the court roundabout and then you got the veils that are saying that showing that okay okay go ahead whereas the man innocent in conscience or soul was made in the image and likeness of yahweh elohim having divine control or dominion over the fish of the sea, fowl of the air, and the cattle, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. He was made a little lower than the angels with a disposition to serve Yahweh Elohim as shown in the most holy place. That's right. And so, uh, and it's kind of, and he's, he is, and so, uh, you see how he's got Genesis 1, 26 and 27 there. And he's the image of Elohim and he's in the most holy place. So you see how he just explained it all by the pattern. And as long as you're taking those things that are on the chart, the scriptures that are on the chart, the words that he has on the chart and talk mm -hmm. about. And that's what we want to cover. You understand? Or that's what right. you want to talk about when you have your 
uh, assignment, you know, mm -hmm. and try to do the best you can with it, you know, and then that's why, you know, that's how you're raised up as ministers is you just you know, study these things because you have to study and look at these things and, you know, it. and try to do the best you can with it, you know. What you just said, repeat what you just said, I missed it. By the chart? Were you talking about the chart? Yeah, just like what we read in the Elohim book. Then you, you're looking at the chart and you're seeing that it's the sixth day of creation. You know that the sixth day, according to Moses' vision, he's got to depict it on the chart. And, and with the veil saying division between spirit and soul, uh, that's the spirit in the most holy place and the soul's the holy place part. Um, and then you have the uh, first veil says division between body and soul. So the body's in the court roundabout. It's formed from the dust of the earth. If it came from the earth, it goes back, back to, the, to earth, the earth, the body. Uh, you got to know where you come from to know where you're going to. And, <laughs> but there's a but our spirit and soul didn't come from the earth. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you know that's the part that's made in the image and likeness of the Creator. So it goes back to him that gave it. That's what we read back there in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Okay, good. And you see how he's reflecting these things that are with Adam, with uh, breathing. Uh, Yahshua breathed on his disciples, just like Yahweh, which is Yahshua, breathed into Adam's nostril the breath of life, and he becomes a living soul. Okay? And he has scriptures with that. Okay. And so just, just use the chart. The scriptures that are on there, like you all had the scriptures read, that's what you want to do. That's how you cover your plate with the net, with the, make sure you get like Dr. Kinley do, uh, showing with the uh, a is the most holy place. Uh, so 11 A is most holy place of plate 11, but it correlates with one A. That's what he does every time, pretty much. And then that uh, uh, one 11 B would be the second veil. So you got the second veil there, division between soul and spirit. See that? And you saw all the scriptures that you all had read for that. And that correlates with 11B correlates with 1B, which is the second veil. And then 11C is the holy place. So 11 uh, or 1C is the holy place. So here's the 11C is the holy place according to plate 11. See, that's the holy place. And then you got the first veil is, 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 is called uh, uh, 11D, right? And that's uh, the division between body and soul. So that means soul's holy place and body in the court roundabout. So then 11E is the body, formed him from the dust of ground. And he was didn't have any life, see, then. But then he breathes into his nostril, the breath of life, he becomes a living soul. All right? So he's showing it that it's spirit, soul, body. And somebody will have plate 12 tomorrow and, you know, or I don't know how you do it, but you all be going into it. Okay, okay, you know, yeah, yeah, Leonard has played 12. Um, I don't have his number either. He's he's not here today. He comes on Friday. Yeah, he comes on Fridays. Oh, okay, well, good. Maybe he'll be here tomorrow. Okay, you know, I wanted to know, like, so how would you how would we run the principles that we see in the tabernacle? So he's see, he comes, he was dead buried in Mother Earth. Yahweh gives him the breath and life. That's a resurrection. So you got death, burial, resurrection, uh, sends, he becomes a living soul. So how would you find, is it, how would you find in the holy place, intercession, food, you know, um, nourishment, food, light, you know, he's, he's, he's enlightened. He's got a, a, a physical act activated body. You know, how do you find those, um, principles and then I, I could see, okay, so he's made in the image of Elohim. So you got a, a unity, you know. So, but but how did how do you pull those out? Silence. When he's formed from the dust of the ground, mm -hmm. 
you know, it's in a lifeless or a death burial state. But then he breathes in his nostrils, of breath of life, he becomes a living soul. That's I said that memory. already. What's, okay, what's, that's where's it? What's it? Where's it here? All right. He's the almighty provider. You see the trees around there? Right. See, the thing is, he's got a soul. Okay. Who illuminated the soul? Yeah, we are. Light, that he's the light. You understand? Then he provides and gives them meat or something to eat for. Doesn't it say that in Genesis 1, 26, 27? He gives them all the herb of the field to eat. Right. And, yes. And, the, and told him of every tree he can eat and so on. You understand? Yes. So that's the principle of eating. Yeah. And, you know, it, it uh, and, well, and his inner set, I mean, Yahweh Elohim, he's the one that's, um, he's the one giving you the breath of life you know that's the lungs principle that's what the altar of incense is you understand uh and and so the soul is the inner man there all right okay. uh, you know it's 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 just just like you have uh most holy place would be yahweh that spirit mm -hmm. then uh intermediate state is elohim soul so he's spirit soul Okay, and then, then it came body. down into the flesh, so that spirit, soul, body. That's spirit, what the soul, plate's body. mostly about, you see? Okay. All right. Just make sure you cover what's on the chart. That's the main point. Okay. You see? And you might be able to see other things and get other scriptures to go along with what you're seeing there. Yeah. But yeah. the main point is to be, get people familiar with the chart and to show, you know, uh, the compartments, so showing the veils and yeah. things like that. You know. Okay. All right, that's good. All right, praise Joshua. Um, may I say? Well, I'd like to say, make a comment. Um, since you talked about the charts, and thank you for that. Thank all of you who shared. Um, uh, I'd like to extend an invitation to. To those of you who would like to um, uh, see the chart, uh, Dr. David Underwood, on Sunday, we'll be going into the chart, uh, working with it. Um, so you're invited to Oh, come. the 40 play chart? The 40 play chart, oh. yes. So you're invited to come if you like. Tell them at what seven o'clock in time? the morning. What time? 7 a.m. 7 o'clock in the morning for Eastern Standard Time. Standard time. Oh, Eastern yeah, that'll Time. Be th that'll be 3 o'clock here. Yeah. 4 yeah, o'clock here. Just stay yeah. up all night. Yeah, right. I did it before, but it was kind of hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're able to attend, please do so. Oh, I understand. I, I Yeah, I, I, I understand. I just thought it might be a different time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I have a comment or question rather um, for Frank, maybe he can expound on something that was written, that's written in the school text about how um, Elohim breathed in breath of life and the spirit entered into them. And it talked about something about the, the animal's spirit goes down and the, and the man's spirit goes up, I'm trying to find where it is, but that caught my attention. Um, bottom. Yeah. That was the Ecclesiastics one. Yeah, the Ecclesiastics three, three eighteen or around that first. Okay. Yeah, three twenty one. Ecclesiastics three twenty one. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth? Question mark. Can you expound on that, please? Well, um, just like it said at the beginning, it kind of he's kind of walking it out. He says, uh, "I said in my uh, three eighteen, I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, that 
Yahweh might manifest them that they might see that they themselves are beasts. And see, when you have the whole, if you don't have the Holy Spirit or you have satanic spirits, you got the mark of the beast on you. You understand? Uh, he wants to see that you ain't no better uh, than anyone else uh, when you don't have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's also talking about that they're a creation just like us. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As one dieth, so dieth the other. Don't all of us die? Right. Yes. Yea, they have all one breath. Yahweh gave breath to all, you know, animals and man. Matter of right. fact, uh, when you talk about animation and the word animal, animal comes from the root word is anima, and anima means soul. Anime, yeah. And in the Hebrew, uh, uh, you have a soul being uh, defined as nephesh, mm -hmm. which means breathing creature, okay? So that a man hath no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity. In other words, you're going to have to look to the creator. You have to be resurrected. And don't be carnal minded. But it says all go into one place. All are of the dust. That's the physical body. And all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of beast that goeth downward to the earth? He's got a question mark there. Well, the one we know, we know who knoweth. <laughs> the one that made it, which is Yahweh Elohim. That's right. You understand? <laughs> and then he just keeps talking about it. I mean, that's a, that, that Ecclesiastes third chapter is really a great chapter because, you know, it talks about there's a time and a season for everything. And there's a time to live and a time to die, time to do this and a time to do that. And like Dr. Kenley said, it was a time for playing a fool and it's time for not playing a fool. And when you come to school, it's time out for being a fool. Time you know to grow up. Yeah. In a pit. So, we got to, huh? And so we're about ready to, I mean, class is over. I, I don't know if that helped any, but you know, it's. It did. Thank you. Praise yeah. Yeah. Praise Joshua. Okay. Praise Joshua. Yeah. We had up to 42 attendees today, and as always, a wonderful class. Yeah. Moderator. We thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. in Malaysia, and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in London, England. Let us stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology which is the last two verses in the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever, let us all say hallelujah. 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 Beautiful. Thank you, brethren, and to our wonderful class, Yahweh willing.